Shalom, beloved. It's a word. Lack and abundance. Lack and abundance. You know, when your eyes begin to open, when your eyes are open, you start recognizing that the power of lack actually shows you true abundance. What do I mean? The world teaches us lack, but Yah teaches us true abundance. His word is filled with life. It's filled with abundance, particularly when our spirit and our mind grab hold of it, lack and abundance. The world teaches us that you have to get up, you have to have so much money, you have to go to work, and the lack is what causes you to seek out jobs and you make this money because you want to create abundance. And it would appear, according to the terms of the world, that the abundance is in the hand of another. And we seek it from that hand so that our lack, our so-called deficiency is filled. But the spirit of Yah teaches us abundance. And many times he'll use lack to teach us the power the transformative power of what's in us and how to flip what the world teaches us is lack into abundance. What do I mean? You're getting ready to go shopping. You can't go until tomorrow, but today you need food. You're hungry now. Problem, there is little to nothing in the so-called cupboard, the cupboards are nearly bare. But your hunger is abundant. The food appears to be lacking. But in that moment of hunger, you go into your refrigerator, you go into your cabinets and closets, and you look around at everything. Things that in moments of abundance we have a tendency to change the value of them. We don't see the true value of things when we have abundance. When we're in the midst of the world's abundance, we lack true understanding of what abundance is. But in that moment of lack, you go into the kitchen and you might have a corner edge of olive oil at the bottom of the bottle, you already threw it in the trash. You just didn't empty the trash and put it outside. You may have a cap full of vinegar at the bottom of another bottle. That's in the trash beside the olive oil that you considered empty. Just a teeny little edge. You got a handful of rice. It's so small, you figure, I can't cook anything with that. That's why I need my money. I want to go to the store and get something to eat. You got leftovers that are already on the counter, get ready to be thrown out for garbage because you ate over half of whatever it was and the so-called fish or meat that's left, that was also designated for the garbage. But in that moment of lack, suddenly that creativity, that treasure on the inside of you, starts to explode. That edge of an onion that's left, that the top of a pepper, the top that we cut around with the seeds inside the pepper, that too is in that bag of garbage you just took out of the refrigerator. Suddenly you realize, wait a minute, the seeds we normally dispose of inside of a pepper, we take it and look at it differently during that time of lack that treasure deep down inside of us gets a new set of eyes. And we take and scrape off those little seeds inside the pepper. 
we take that edge of the onion that was designated for the trash and we cut it up. We take that handful of rice and put it in the pot. And that piece of fish that we had and that little edge of meat, we start chopping it up. And that edge of an onion, and we cook it. That corner capful, half a capful of vinegar, that was in the trash because you were going to get a new bottle. And that corner edge of olive oil, we put that in the pan and we take the seeds and we take the onion and we start sauteing it. And we add a little water and a little seasoning because we don't want it to evaporate. And we're so caught up in our hunger. Some of the onion burns. In a moment of abundance, that burnt edged onion and some of those burnt seeds, we might toss the whole pan and start again. But in a moment of lack, we gain a humble appreciation and our eyes open to the power of creativity. During a moment of lack, abundance comes forth. The abundance of the treasures put in us by Yahuwah. Our appreciation changes. Our values shift. Our understanding grows. During a time of so-called lack, we actually begin to experience an abundance of truth, an abundance of knowledge, an abundance of skill, an abundance of creativity, if you will. Now the rice is done, we put it on a plate and we take all of what we were sauteing and simmering, even the edges of the burnt onions and the edges of the burnt seeds, we don't spare any of it to throw it away. Suddenly that half a cap full of vinegar that we would have thrown away during a moment of abundance. Mm -hmm. We recognize the value of it, just like we would during a time of abundance when it's a full bottle of vinegar. We recognize vinegar is vinegar is vinegar, even if it's only a cap full. And that edge on a bottle of the olive oil that would have been thrown away during an hour of abundance, suddenly is abundant in and of itself. And when we're all said and done, that dish that we make from the leftovers we were throwing away is one of the best dishes we ever cooked. Not only are we taking care of what we have left because it's so little as we pick up the pieces, like Yeshua HaMashiach told the disciples when there was uh, five fishes and two loaves, he pick up the pieces. And in that instance, they got 12 baskets. Well, you picked up the pieces in a time of what was considered lack and created something that looks like abundance. And as you eat the dish, you are not only feasting on the quality of the food, you suddenly realize that even the edges of burnt onions have a flavor that makes that dish taste the way you're trying to remember what you cooked so that when you do get what is considered abundance when you go shopping, you can still make that high-end dish that you made during the time of lack. And those seeds we normally toss unless we're planting them, which when you buy pepper, a lot of times we're tossing the seeds. Those seeds create something in that dish that you know when you make a dish again, it would lack if it lacks those seeds and those onions the way you cooked them with what you thought was lack. There is a treasure on the inside given by Yah that we can only see the value of the power of it, the transformation of it, the creativity. When we are experiencing what the world calls lack, what we might consider lack, you get humble enough so that your eyes open enough 
and your appreciation changes. It grows. Yes, yes, yes. Transformed, if you will. We are transformed in this world because Yah put a treasure in this earthen vessel that is far greater than the vessel that holds the treasure. But in this world, we're taught that the treasure is the outer when actually this rots and dies away, but that which is on the inside is everlasting. When that treasure on the inside starts to speak, you start to see that which appears to be little is much. And that which appears to be much actually can cause us to think little because abundance, the world's abundance, what it tells us is abundance, can actually cause us to lack, lack appreciation, lack creativity, lack the ability to go on the inside and pull out something that's always been there. The word of life, there are some people, they speak and their words are dead. There's just nothing there. And there are other people, they speak and their words are so powerful. Because they have living words coming out of them. And if we go according to the world's ideology of people, hmm, we may lack the ability to recognize the treasure inside of people. Well, they couldn't be nothing anyway because that's a female. What does she know? Oh, that's my sister. That's my brother. They ain't nobody. They lack the ability to see the treasure that is inside of you, inside of us, the chosen. They lack that transformational power. That is why people who think they know you, they, they, they have such an abundance in their mind of knowledge of you that they lack being able to see who you are. Some people will resent you, darling, because the light is inside of you. They don't want that light to shine. They want the light, but they want your light extinguished. Or they want to control the light, never understanding the light that if you attempted to control it, you have created a deficiency because you're not allowing the light to abound. You cannot contain it. When you think about it, before I finish, the light inside of us is like a candle. You take a candle, you light it. If you take your lit candle and you go around to other candles and begin to light those candles, there is no lack in the original candle's light. What it has done is create abundance where in somebody else's eyes, there's only one candle that's lit with fire because they lack that treasure to see. But the light, the ones who are in the light, beloved, they know. I can take my candle and light all the other candles, and it doesn't diminish my light one iota. It actually creates more abundance of light and illuminate, illuminates the atmosphere even more so than when it was just my light. Hmm. Give and it shall be given unto you. What does that mean? When you share your light and light another one's candle and no, not the ones that don't want the light because you don't give this treasure to the dogs. You know, there are people who resent that light in you because there's no light in them. And when you try to illuminate them, they don't want that light. They want to put the light out. Why? Because they belong to the world. But, Again, 
that which is supposedly lacking in you amidst their abundance. In reality, you are the one who has the abundance given to you by Yahuwah, and there is no lack. He will cause you to see things that during the times of what the world calls abundance, you're blind. But when you are humbled, your eyes are opened. Your level of appreciation expounds. And it's very easy to share because you understand as I give this light. I am not diminishing my own light. I am actually extending the perimeters of how far that light extends until if we continue to light each other's candle, we'll turn the dark out with the abundance of our light and lack nothing. It is word, beloved. Coming from a place that the world might call lack. And it's really abundance. To reference what I said in the beginning, you know some of the best dishes ever made were made during a time of lack. What the world called lack. Because the creative juices begin to flow. Your insight opens up. Your skill, your appreciation for that which appears to be little is transformed into much. There is no lack. It is only lacking when we look through the eyes of the world. It is a word, beloved. Shalom.